Come and meet me at the market with my marvelous Maclusa, my Lebanese-style squash stew. Julie Tabuli's Lebanese Kitchen is made possible by... Do your thing. Do your thing, do your thing. Syracuse, do your thing. Do your thing, do your thing. Syracuse, do your thing. There's something so special about strolling around the farmer's market on a Saturday afternoon or Sunday morning that just sort of puts a smile on my face. I must say that besides my mama's glorious garden, farmer's markets are my favorite place to frequent. I love meeting and greeting all of the farmers and asking them all sorts of inquisitive questions. I love being able to walk around in an open outdoor market. And I love being surrounded by the sunshine, sights, sounds, and sampling and savoring the season's bounty right before my eyes. And today, this fresh farmer's market is inspiring me to make my marvelous makbusta, my Lebanese-style squash stew. Meaning to mix things up, my marvelous makbusta is a magnificent medley of vibrant vegetables and an array of amazing aromatics slowly simmer away into a spectacular and scrumptious squash stew that is sure to be a staple at your table. Along with my macaroon bitum, my Lebanese-style homemade pasta that just sort of melts in your mouth. Plus, I'm making a special surprise just for you. Fresh from the farmer's market to a mouth-watering meal, this is one Middle Eastern masterpiece that you won't want to miss. Welcome to today's show. It's a Lebanese cuisine celebration of the season's bounty. And it's my summertime squash stew called makbusa. And makbusa literally just translates to mix things up, which the Lebanese and Middle Eastern cultures just love to do. Actually, it all started with the kusa squash because they would sometimes get so big in my grandmother's, my sitho's garden, that she just didn't know what to do with them. They were too big to core and stuff and our kusa squash stew dish that we make. So she decided that, you know what, she was going to just chop them all up and put them with all of her other fresh vegetables and eggplant and tomatoes and chickpeas and just make it into a really sort of uh, delicious vegetarian stew. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing today and sharing it with all of you. But the first thing that we're going to get started on is our aromatics. So I'm just going to get myself some garlic, a um, couple more shallots, and an onion. And you really do need all of these aromatics to make this stew sensational. So I'm using today a Vidalia onion, but you could also use a yellow or Spanish onion. You could use a red onion, whichever you have on hand. We're going to be slicing and dicing all of these aromatics. This dish truly is a celebration of the season's bounty, whether you have your own garden at home or whether you love to frequent the farmer's markets that I like to do as well. Okay, that looks great. And now we're going to get some oil in our big pot that we have over here. We want to make sure to use a good amount of oil because we have a lot of vegetables that need uh, lots of love. <laughs> 
Okay, and I'm gonna get my heat onto medium. And we are just gonna get our onions in. I just love the smell of onions and shallots and garlic sort of slowly sauteing away. <laughs> when somebody walks in the house, they know that you're cooking something good, right? Okay, and now we're also gonna season this with some sea salt. We're actually gonna be seasoning every layer as we go. So we're just gonna let those sort of get translucent, kind of cook them down a little bit until they're nice and soft. And in the meantime, we're gonna start chopping up all of our squash because it is our summertime, or any time I should say, squash stew. I'm gonna grab two green zucchini, and I'm also gonna grab two yellow squash. And these are really nice, good size. You know, they're medium size. If you were to find smaller ones, then you could use three. And then we're gonna get our kusa squash our Middle Eastern specialty squash. And because these are small squash, we're gonna use three of these. And what I like to do is I like to actually partially peel each of the squash, and then we're just gonna go across into sort of little cubes. Doesn't that look pretty when you partially peel them? Really makes a nice presentation. And also the taste too, because then you don't have too much skin going on, you know? So obviously you know that Mama's Garden is my number one place to go to get all of my fresh vegetables and fruits and herbs and things like that, but I also love to frequent our farmer's markets. Okay, so we're gonna stir our onions and our shallots and our garlic, and they are ready to meet and greet our squash. They are translucent, they've softened for us, they have a little light sort of golden color going on, which looks and smells amazing in our Julie Tabuli Lebanese kitchen today. And now we're gonna get all of our squash in the mix. No pun intended. <laughs> Look at that, doesn't that look beautiful? It's fun to actually make this stew because it is so colorful, so it's really appealing, you know, as you're layering the different colors. And then we're also going to season this with sea salt and make sure to sort of toss those in with the oil and the onions, just like that. And at this point, I'm gonna turn our heat to low because I just sort of wanna slowly kind of cook them down. And now we're gonna to get to chopping the remaining squash that we have on our board. We have one more yellow squash, one more green squash, and two more kusa squash. They're so cute. I have our second batch of yellow squash, green zucchini, and kusa squash simmering away, and they're all cooking down so lovely, and they still are remaining that beautiful, vibrant colors that they all have, because as you can see, that I'm keeping the pot uncovered. So we're gonna make the entire uh, stew this way. We're not gonna cover the pot at all. Okay, and now it's time, I'm so excited, for one of my signature ingredients, which is my Sicilian eggplant. Um, so we're gonna treat these the same way that we did with the, um, all of our squashes. We're gonna just sort of partially peel them. The reason why I actually am really attracted to these eggplant for this stew is the biggest reason is because the seeds are small. And the bitterness in eggplant all lies in the seeds. So the bigger the eggplant, the bigger the seeds, thus uh, the more bitter they can become. The eggplant also gives a nice sort of meatiness, a vegetarian meatiness, I should say, to this dish. It's really not the same without the eggplant. Okay, so that's it for eggplant. And now we're gonna get this in the mix as well. And our zucchini and our kusa squash and our yellow summer squash is cooking down really lovely at this point. All of these sort of natural juices kind of flowing out because the squash has a lot of water in it. So just between the oil that we have and the water, we're doing pretty good. But we're gonna get some tomatoes in there too. And that's gonna add a lot of juice too. So we have our heat on low at this point because we're just gonna slowly, slowly cook those vegetables away. And now we're gonna get into our tomatoes. 
my favorite tomato also, which is our tomato on the vine. Smells fresh. <laughs> Woo, they're just popping off the vine for me today. Um, okay, so we're gonna simply just dice these up. You don't have to worry about finely dicing them up too much because they're gonna be cooked in the pot as well. But we do wanna make sure that we save all of their delicious uh, juices because those tomato juices are really gonna make this flavorful. Okay, so now we also need to add a little bit more olive oil right on those tomatoes. They need some seasoning. And salt, of course, because Tomatoes definitely need salt. They need to be seasoned well. Don't be scared about how much I am salting each layer because there are a lot of vegetables and ingredients going on in this stew, and each one of them needs some TLC. Tender Lebanese care. <laughs> and I thank my sitho so much for making this dish and passing it on to my mother, who passed it on to me. Next up is our macaroon batum. It's our Lebanese style homemade pasta. Just salting our hot water for our macaroon batum, our Lebanese little pasta. And now we're gonna start to make it, of course. So I'm just gonna get our flour up on the board. We're going to do three cups of unbleached flour. And now we are going to get a little bit of our sea salt. We want our dough to have a little bit of seasoning to it. And now we're just gonna stir the flour with the salt, make sure that they're evenly incorporated. And I'm also using the tips of my fingers just to sort of loosen any little lumps or clumps going on in the flour as well, just so it's nice and soft. And now we're just making a little bit of a well also in the center of our flour bowl. And we're gonna get a one and a third cup of lukewarm water. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, now this is a non-yeast dough, I should say. Okay, so there's no yeast but it's still gonna be really nice and soft and have a really nice bite. And now I'm just working it under, look at this. Beautiful, right guys? Beautiful dough, made at home. <laughs> See, kinda bounces back at me a little bit. It's not too stiff, it's not too sort of soft, it's right in the middle. And to make our lives easier, we're gonna cut this in half and then cut again in quarters. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna take each segment, we're gonna tuck them under at the same time, we're rotating it around, we're making a circular shape with the dough, just like that. You can kind of pull it apart a little bit too. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're gonna take our thin rolling pin and we're gonna start to roll each side out with one hand and then you're rotating the dough itself with the other. It's really simple. Take a nice sharp knife and cut this in strips. So we're just gonna take each segment just like this. I'm gonna press my three fingers into the center of the dough and then I'm gonna press it right down on the colander holes and sort of roll it back, just like that. And then we're just gonna sort of keep them on a floured board and we're gonna continue to make them. Again, I'm just pressing my three fingers into the center of the dough and pressing down while kind of turning over. This is another recipe from my sit though, actually, that she would make quite often for my mother and all of her siblings back in Lebanon. So I love that we can carry on our traditions in our family. Look at our lovely little Lebanese pastas. They're just beautiful on our board and now we're gonna have them take a little swim into our hot, boiling salted water. And then we're gonna let them cook for about 10 to 12 minutes until they all float up to the top, similar to an Italian gnocchi. And then I'm gonna clear the decks because we've made a little bit of a mess with making our dough and Lebanese pastas. And then I'm gonna get to making our delicious garlic sauce that's gonna coat them. I'm just pounding away 
today getting my arm workout of the day with our garlic. We're getting it into a nice, smooth, creamy paste because we're gonna be making our garlicky goodness sauce for our little Lebanese pastas, which are just about floating to the top of our pot at this point. And I have a nice creamy paste. I just want you guys to see that. That is what we are going for, and it works out really well in our mortar and pestle, our jidin, what we call it in Arabic. And I have a nice big bowl here. We're just gonna get our garlic paste into the bowl. This is gonna be a delicious garlicky goodness sauce. Okay, just gonna drizzle a little bit of olive oil in the bowl. Maybe about a third of a cup or so. And we're just gonna whisk this together. And we're also going to season it with some sea salt that I have over here. Okay, just like that. And now for our fresh herbs, which is going to be our nana, our spearmint. I'm going to take some beautiful leaves right off the small stems. I love when you cut through the mint. It just smells so good. There's lots of freshness going on today. Fresh from the farmer's market, for sure. Wonderful. Okay, now we're just going to get this fresh mint into our bowl. Going to whisk this together, too. Okay, our pastas are ready. I'm just gonna get our whisk out of the bowl there for a minute. And now we're just gonna simply ladle them up. You can see that our little Lebanese pastas have boiled up beautifully. They're nice and supple and soft. They're gonna taste just delicious in this garlicky and mint goodness sauce that we have over here. I'm actually gonna just turn our heat off at this point because these babies are done just like that. You can see they're nice and hot, they're steaming when they hit that sauce, which is also gonna make the garlic and olive oil and mint sauce warm as well. Okay, so now we're just gonna toss it all together. Woo! It smells utterly amazing in this kitchen right now. Now we're gonna give these little Lebanese pastas a taste. I'm gonna grab my little sharp wooden skewer, kind of a little throwback to my grandmother, my sitho, who would have my mom and her siblings uh, gather the uh, olive tree branches and then sharpen them to mimic a stick. Mm. It melts in your mouth. It is absolutely delicious. I love how soft and supple the Lebanese pastas are. And I love the little chew that they have too, along with the garlic and the mint and the olive oil. And that little bit of sea salt definitely really makes these pastas stand out. So this is good to go. And now we're going to go back to my makbusa because that has been slowly simmering away throughout the day today. And we're going to finish it up. I'm going to grab some finishing touches, some special surprises that I have for you guys. We have some whole cooked chickpeas or garbanzo beans. And we're just going to put a couple handfuls of these in, about a cup or so. And my other little special surprise for this stew is some beautiful yellow, golden yellow, I should say, and red pear cherry tomatoes. And I'm just going to kind of put a couple handfuls right on top, just like that. I think it makes a really nice touch because they're just gonna warm through a little bit, still remaining intact, but kind of like pop in your mouth, which is always fun. <laughs> and now I have some also some beautiful heirloom variety tomatoes too. I mean, these are all of the different types of tomatoes that you can find. They're in your gardens, fresh from the farmer's markets, farm stands. There's just so many beautiful tomatoes that come up, so it's a shame not to use them. At this point, we just need to season our stew up. And I'm going to grab our pepper, little freshly ground pepper. Give it a little bit more flavor. And we're also gonna grab our allspice too. I want to give it a little quick taste to make sure that we're on point. There's a couple more finishing flavors that we're going to do right at the very end, but this is just about there, so let's give it a taste, shall we? <laughs> Smells delicious. Mm. I love how juicy this stew is. It really has a lot of flavor, a lot of different texture. I just had a bite of the zucchini and the kusa squash and the tomatoes. It's just so full of flavor, which is why I especially love this stew. And I know that you guys are just gonna love it too.
So I have one more special surprise for you all, fresh from the farmer's market, and that is our beautiful squash blossoms. Look how bright and bountiful these are, and they are gonna be so delicious. We're gonna basically simply batter them up and fry them up too. So the squash blossoms actually grow on the zucchini and the kusa plants, and I actually see them growing all over as shoots in mama's garden too. So it's just a little special extra that I kinda wanted to share with you guys today. I'm just gonna take them by their stem, just like so. I'm gonna simply dip them into our egg wash that we have here. And I have some unbleached all-purpose flour. I added a little bit of salt. And then I'm just sort of dipping them into the flour batter too. Just like that. And actually, the squash blossom was my first sort of um, food memory. I don't know if I was like four or five years old, but I remember being on my mom's lap in our first home in Utica, where I was born. And I remember her picking up the uh, squash blossom and sort of eating it and then feeding it to me. And using, again, the stem as a little handle here, we're just going to sort of gently, just like that, get them into the hot oil. I'm using vegetable oil today, but you could also use canola oil. And it's a shallow fry, so I don't have too much oil in the pan. I'm gonna get actually all of them in. I think all of them can fit in. Look at that. And they just sort of blossom right up as they hit the oil. They're just beautiful. Okay, I think these are about done. Wait till you see these guys. Wow. Beautiful. Look at that. This makes me so happy right now. I just love the sight of these blossoms, that they're edible, they're abundant in our garden and in our farmer's markets. And now we're just going to simply season these with a little sea salt, just like that. I'm just gonna fry the rest of our squash blossoms up and then we are in the home stretch of our fresh from the farmer's market meal. magnificent market meal that we've made today and I'm just going to finish up our makbusa, our summertime squash stew with a little bit of spiciness. Some Hungarian peppers, some hot Hungarian peppers that I just diced up really sort of quickly and a little bit of our fresh flat leaf parsley as well. Just adds a little bit of pop of color and also freshness to our summertime squash stew. And then we have our macaroon batum front and center, our Lebanese style little pastas that were tossed in this delicious garlicky goodness sauce. And then our special surprise of the day, our squash blossoms that were lightly battered and fried and they just are so robust and absolutely delicious. I'm so happy to have shared my Lebanese cuisine celebration of the season's bounty and the fresh farmer's market with you all today. And I hope that you make these dishes at home because I know that you're absolutely just gonna love them just as much as I do. And as always, I wish you and yours to take global hana, eat in happiness and sending smiles. Julie Tabuli's Lebanese Kitchen, authentic recipes for fresh and flavorful Mediterranean home cooking, is now available. The cookbook offers 125 recipes, hands-on instructions, and tips and tricks to help you make all of Julie's dishes from this season. Cook, create, and celebrate Julie's authentic recipes right at home. To order a copy, call 1-800-PLAY-PBS or order online at shoppbs.org. Join Julie Tabuli for fresh and flavorful Lebanese foods for your family and friends at julietabuli.com. Find Julie's authentic recipes for the tastiest Mediterranean home cooking. It's Julie tested and mama approved. Visit julietabuli.com today.
Julie Tabuli's Lebanese Kitchen is made possible by Do your thing Do your thing, do your thing Syracuse to your thing Do your thing, do your thing Syracuse to your thing